how to look stylish without spending anything. If you have followed this channel for a while, you must have realized by now that the goal here isn't about teaching you how to look elegant or classic. While these are valid, as multifaceted, creative and curious women, we want way more than that. We want to find our own unique style. The cornerstone of being a stylish woman is an inextricable desire to stay loyal to their style and the curiosity to explore the new, which culminates in taking risks. And risks are definitely fine. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the tricks that I learned with the many stylish women I worked throughout the years and how you can incorporate those to your daily dressing experience. So if this is something you're interested in, then keep on watching. The first one is rule of three. I mentioned that in other videos and this is something that is used in arts in general. And we include in style because style is an art as well. Stylish women always seek harmony between their highly personal sense of style and the versatility of the pieces they wear to reflect it. So here I am illustrating how this rule works in practical terms. In art in general, three is the magic number. Having key three elements will convey a more effective and remarkable image. So here in this first outfit, it lacks a fundamental item if used incomplete. We already know that a blazer has the power to transform a look, but in this case it provides the missing element. It's always tricky to accessorize on warm days, especially when you're trying to stay cool, but a few small additions like a padded top, contrasting socks and colorful shoes make all the difference. Now you have three key items where the eyes can rest upon. Stylish women may differ in their background, their lifestyle, and of course their personal style, but one thing they have in common, they never dress for their body shape or their age. And by that I don't mean that they completely disregard their body shape. What I mean by that is that they know their body very well, they know how to dress for their bodies very well, that they surpass that point. They know that being boxed in certain stereotypes is extremely frustrating. To illustrate what I'm saying, picture this scenario. If everything you buy is in neutral colors and it complements your skin tone and it's très sophistiqué, yes, yeah, somewhat. Or maybe you only wear styles that suit your body type perfectly, like a glove. But the reality is that that single approach to dressing will leave you feeling flat and repetitive. And even though we have a core style that is multifaceted, in addition to the many emotions we express on a daily basis, then you can see how a constricted approach to style doesn't apply. Friction in a stylish woman dictionary means fun, means interest. And they make sure they bring it into the mix in every outfit composition. It could be as simple or different fabrications that evoke different vibes. or inserting a weird color into the mix. Or the juxtaposition of something more formal to tone down something that's more edgy, to solidify the whole look. It's hard to create a lasting style if you're always worried about what's trending at a given time. Of course it's fun to add a trending pop of color or to try a new accessory fad. There's nothing wrong with that. However, with a closet full of the latest trends that are so short-lived, not only will make dressing a very expensive task, but will also make it more difficult for you to understand what your actual style is. Be true to who you are while experimenting the occasion or trend. Personalities apart, most stylish women aren't afraid of being themselves. That is what's so fascinating about them. 
they almost have an aversion of looking like somebody else. That reminded me of somebody at a younger age. And that only comes with confidence. It's not that wishwashing they're gonna love me. It's saying it's okay if they don't love me because I know the motivation behind the reason why I picked this outfit. And this is another favorite of mine. They wear their pieces differently each time. They make different compositions with the same items. They just change everything with a little detail in here and there, with the, the way they tie the belt or they wear the scarf or where they place it. They always come up with something that will give a different vibe to the ending result. Even if you don't like what they're wearing, at the bare minimum, you're gonna find it interesting. Then the next one can be a bit controversial. But let me clarify what basics is. Basics can be different things for different people. Basics are basics in shape, color, and texture, all three together. If it has something to eat, a texture, a different color, or a different shape, it isn't a basic. Having at least one of these elements, um, a knot shape or a different color or a little bit of texture, you still be basic enough to ground other statement pieces, but they won't be boring. You get the picture? So I'm gonna illustrate how it works here. Basics, let's face it, are boring. You never see a stylish woman wearing something basic, which doesn't imply something out there either. It has to have a je ne sais quoi, that tiny little thing to do the job, yet grounding enough to be versatile. They wear color, but not as you know it. By color, I don't mean their personal coloring, like I am a spring or I am a fall or whatever. They wear color like an artist does. Do you see a painter limiting their palette when creating art? Why should we when we're dressing. And I hear you saying, oh, but there are some colors that are flattering on me while others aren't. And let me clarify one thing for you. Personal coloring will only work around your face because that's where the light reflects back to your face. So it doesn't matter where else you wear color that won't interfere. So why buy an entire wardrobe based on personal coloring if the only place that counts is around your neck area. And let's not forget that we change as well our coloring. Even throughout the year, when we get more tanned or more, or more pale throughout the year, we dye our hair or we go gray naturally. All these things interfere in personal coloring. So I think, although it has some value to a very limited extent, what I'm saying about color here is color as energy, color as uh, a way of playing with the eye is on a creative way, in a creative manner. Color is very much intertwined with confidence. So I'm gonna show you here a few examples of how stylish women wear color. One pop of color catches the eye. It becomes the focal point and it's easy to do. But two colors divide the attention. It becomes busy. When you wear multiple colors, nothing is a focal point. Therefore, interestingly, it eases the eye. An outfit composed of neutrals that belong to the same family color and have richness to them when none overshadows the other is super interesting. Your eyes just rest the entire outfit as a whole. Stylish women, for the most part, they wear colors that are neutral, but they have depth to them. And breaking a border of neutrals, as you're gonna see here. 
Here's what I mean by the good and the bad neutral. And by good and bad, I don't mean wrong. But neutrals that have depth, that have richness to them, will work much harder for you. The outfit on the right lacks depth. It's way one-dimensional. The addition of a deeper neutral brings the outfit on the left to life. Here I'm focusing on color alone for simplicity's sake. Finding your personal style isn't instantaneous, and it takes time getting to know yourself and what looks good on your body. After all, your clothing is the extension of who you are, so don't give away that power. So there you have it, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it informative. And if you did, please go ahead and give this video a like and consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so. As usual, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time and hope to see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.